Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Hello. Thanks for joining, guys. Hey, everyone. One thing you could do for now until we get everybody in is make sure that um, your name is correct on your screen. Just so that if you guys have questions, we can call on the right names. Hello. <laughs> Hi. It's good to see everybody. Hi. Hello. So we'll just give it a couple more minutes to make sure everybody that's wanting to join has joined. And then we'll get started. Whoever just said that is yes. <laughs> is that Colin? Uh, <laughs> sorry for any like this sounds. <laughs> Are you arting away over there, Charlie? No, it's the markers. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. I see lots of familiar faces and some new faces. So let's just wait one more minute for any stragglers to join. And if you haven't already, um, go ahead and make sure that your screen name says who you are so we can call on you when you have questions. And if you have more than one kiddo in your house, you can just put them like Lillian, Clara, and Willa do. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Good showing today. Well, so I am Katie Watkins and I work at the Langley Well Center and I'm gonna let the rest of the um, Orca Network and Langley Well Center staff introduce themselves really quick. So Jeannie, you wanna start? Hi, I'm Jeannie Hamilton. I'm uh, the new assistant manager at the Langley Well Center and a long time Well Center volunteer. Thank you. How about you, Cindy? I'm Cindy Hansen and I do education programs with Orca Network. Um, Susan? Hi, I'm Susan Berta, um, and I'm the executive director and co-founder of Orkin Network. Awesome. And Gary? Yeah, I'm Gary Heinrich, and I am the volunteer coordinator for the Stranding Network we have here on Island County. Well, and we also have a new Orkin Network member. Tiffany, you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm the newbie. <laughs> um, it's nice to meet everybody. Great. Okay, so just our usual rules and housekeeping. Um, we are going to have everybody stay on mute during the presentation today, but then you're going to get an opportunity to, um, to do a, an interactive activity as well as to ask questions if you have them. If you didn't already know, we're going to be talking about pinnipeds today. Um, when we do have questions, you can put them in the chat or you can just simply raise your hand or you can do a real hand. Either way, we'll get your, your question answered. Um, just so everybody knows, we are recording this. So if you're not comfortable with your face on the screen, you can turn your video off. Um, after our presentation today, like I said, Jeannie over here is gonna be giving us an activity. So stick around for that. And I'm actually going to have Cindy run the poll really quick so we can find out where everybody's coming from today. 
before we do that, I want to know who Colin's friend was. Yeah, I was. <laughs> this is my my duck. It's living oh. in in our house because her sister and her son died, so oh. she has no one to hang out with except us. Oh, she loves you. Thanks for it's really me. cute. <laughs> Thank you for showing her to us. Oh, she she loves me. I'm her mom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's great that so awesome do you know that ducks love dandelions if you want to give them a special treat i'm sure he'll go crazy they love dandelions i i might have knew that i i, I don't know if i have <laughs> i got plenty in my yard you can come over there <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will go ahead and start the poll. And those of you who have been here before know how this works, but we just have a couple of questions for you just to get started. So we'll give you a few minutes to fill this out. We just wanna know where you're joining us from today. And if you check other, um, please go ahead and write in the chat box where you're coming from. And then what part of Washington, if you are joining us from Washington? Have you been to one of our events before? And are you excited to learn about the giant Pacific octopus? <laughs> we should have redone that poll. <laughs> let's, let's just imagine that that says, are you excited to learn about pinnipeds? <laughs> And sorry if you really did want to learn about octopuses today. <laughs> we do have um, a youth event for octopuses on our YouTube channel. Yeah, Charlie. Do you have a question, Charlie? I do. What exactly are pinnipeds? Ooh, that's a great question. And I'm going to wait for Gary to do his presentation because you're going to find exactly what that is. All right. I think just about everybody has answered. So we'll go ahead and end the poll and I'll show you what the results are. Okay, so most of our people are from Washington. Um, we also have California, Canada, and I think I saw a couple of other places in the chat as well. Yeah. And then we have about half of our people from are from Whidbey or Camino Island. We have some from Seattle, Tacoma, and then another as well. Um, five of our people have been to our virtual youth events before, and three, this is their first time. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. And then everybody's excited to learn about both giant Pacific octopus and pinnipeds. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for doing the poll and I will turn it back over to Katie. Awesome. Thanks, Cindy. All right. And I am going to turn it over to Gary. Hi. Uh, aren't I lucky? Well, I'll welcome everybody. Um, this is, this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, pinnipeds. Well, let's start first of all. Well, let's talk about me. I'm actually in California at the moment. Um, I'm a captain on uh, basically pirate ships, these tall ships, and uh, they've asked me to come down for a month or so to help them out down here. But most of the time, I'm, I'm on Whidbey. Uh, I live in Freeland and uh, have been doing the uh, stranding network. Um, for a few years. A lot of fun. Um, we do a lot of stuff with fortunately live animals, but unfortunately sometimes animals that don't make it and they call me and we go out and, you know, try to rescue them if we can, try to get them back into the water with their, their mom and dad and see where it goes from there. But uh, so today we're going to do the talk on pinnipeds, which is most of what we see here uh, on Whidbey. We occasionally see some dolphins and whales, but uh, uh, pinnipeds. Okay, I had a great question. What is a pinniped? Well, it's that's Greek.
for flipper or fin footed. Pinna stands for either flipper or fins and uh, ped, like, you know, pedal, things like that, is where you put your foot. And when we talk about some of the characteristics of it, well, you'll see kind of the, their flippers look like fins or, or feathers, actually. Anyway, so that's that. Um, pinnipeds are mammals. And if you've had any connection with what are the characteristics of a mammal, um, basically, you know, that's what we are, warm-blooded. We can't, uh, you know, we, we're dependent on, uh, you know, staying warm. We can't, we can control our own body temperatures. Um, we don't do it by air. I mean, we don't do it consciously. Uh, we breathe air, mammal, um, give live birth. When you're born, you're alive, you're breathing, and uh, have hair. Those are kind of the basic characteristics of a mammal. Well, pen pets are mammals, and they have all those things that we're going to be talking about. Um, the, uh, ones that we deal with, I think maybe we should go to our first slide on, uh, the characteristics of seals and sea lions, pinnipeds, seals and sea lions are pinnipeds. And, um, so basically we're now going to talk about what's the difference between a seal and a sea lion. All right. Uh, this is not the greatest of slides, but it kind of gives you a little idea. Let me see if I can move my cursor around. Um, seals have very short, right here we're talking seals. Uh, harbor seal, elephant seal, their four flippers are really short. Uh, where a sea lion, the four flippers are really long. Um, about a quarter of their body length on a sea lion is uh, the length of their four flippers. And the seals, uh, four flippers are short, less than a quarter of their body length. Um, the, the, the sea lions use those uh, front flippers uh, mostly to propel themselves and really get through the water. Uh, the hind flippers of a seal is what is used to propel them through the water. And they use their front flippers kind of to guide them like airplane wing or something you know, like that. Um, those flippers also for a sea lion um, really can get them up and moving on land. Um, they, don't, they almost, I don't wanna say they run, but when you look at a move, a sea lion, it's almost like running and they can go pretty darn quick. A seal kind of wiggles, wiggles like a worm and uh, it moves pretty well too, but not nearly as quickly as a sea lion can do on land. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide and we'll talk about the, uh, some of the characteristics on the external other than the flippers. Uh, if you look, one of the main things is that a sea lion, which is otard, I can't even pronounce the Greek, but they have a tiny little ear. We have a bigger ear flap, but they have an external ear. Uh, which is very noticeable. On a seal, it's only a tiny little hole. There's no external ear flap. So it's one of the first things you can really tell that's noticeably different uh, other than their big four flippers, where as I said before, the four flipper on the seal is relatively small. Uh, on the sea lion, not only is it much larger, but they can also kind of stand up on it and uh, and move around on it very well. Um, the hind flippers on a seal, a sea lion, I'm sorry, can fold underneath forward. Uh, and again, they can move on them really quick where the hind flipper on a seal is right out behind them. They, they can't fold them underneath and they don't use them on land to move uh, very effectively. So the, four, the flippers and the ears are really one of the mo most uh, noticeable differences. Uh, the most common of the seals that we have on the island are harbor seals, and virtually all of them have spots all over them. Uh, the sea lions don't, aren't spotted, uh, pretty consistent color on their fur. And um, yeah, that's a big difference in how they look. Harbor seals are relatively small uh, compared to sea lions. The two sea lions we see on this island are uh, 
California sea lions and um, what are called stellar sea lions. And they're huge, they're big. So the adult uh, sea lions are larger than the adult uh, seals. I should say harbor seals. Because soon we're gonna be talking about the kind of new addition to our island, uh, uh, the elephant seal, which uh, is big. I mean, it's probably one of the, the second, I would say the second of the large of the uh, uh, pinnipeds uh, worldwide. Um, let's see, what else can I think of that's uh, different in seal versus sea lion? And that's pretty much the, the main things that we're talking about, how they move, uh, uh, their ears, their flippers, uh, and the, the spots. So, um, all right, I think that's good. Between the two, let's move on to the elephant seal. We have had just an amazing occurrence in the last 11 years here on Whidbey Island. Um, actually, we're hoping that we're going to be having a little family that's, uh, it's actually has started and we're hoping it's gonna get bigger and bigger. Um, but it is a miracle story, I call it. Not only what's happening here on the island, but I think uh, the northern elephant seal um, population, what's happened to it over the last hundred years. We're, we're trying to figure out, I, I can't control the slides, so Katie's my slide controller, so Katie, slide. Um, we've had, through the Puget Sound, elephant seals pop in here and there, over, over many, many, many years. But um, back in 2010, we had a elephant seal show up on a beach right here in, I'm gonna say Mutiny Bay, I can tell that much for her. And right out in the same house, you know, this house and she showed up. And uh, as I'll talk about later, I refer to something called molting. Um, it's something that, that elephant seals do uh, and she shows up on the speech and the neighborhood adopted her. They gave her a name, Ellie. And so Ellie starts our story. Deep. Deep. Okay. So it's, uh, again, uh, it was, uh, it had very little, it's right out in front of a house. And so not a lot of public goes back and forth. She obviously has felt comfortable there. And so she would go and she just keep coming back. She'd come up in the same time, somewhere around marshes and molt and go away. Now I'm gonna kind of, as we go along, I'm gonna give us some kind of interesting facts about elephant seals that make them so different than uh, the other pinnipeds and other seals. Um, they don't spend a lot of time on land. Uh, most of the year they're out swimming, uh, live, you know, going and eating and feeding, uh, really only coming ashore to mate, to molt, and to give birth. And then they're back at sea again. And once the babies are born, yeah, three or four, maybe five weeks, and then they're gone. And, um, you know, they show up again, different places. Uh, but again, most of their time is spent in the water, feeding, doing whatever else the seals do in the water. We're not really sure what else. Um, and some of the really interesting things about them is that they can dive and stay underwater without taking a breath for longer than an hour. Think about that. That's pretty crazy. Um, what, do you take a breath and go down in the pool? You're lucky to be there seconds and they're down there for an hour. And the recorded depths of over 8,000 feet. Now, 5,000 feet is a mile. So 8,000 feet is more than a mile and a half underwater. And if any of you have ever gone swimming before and dove to the bottom of a pool, you'll notice that there, you can feel it in your ears. There's pressure as you get down there. Well, the pressure at 8,000 feet is phenomenal. So somehow their body is able to adapt to that pressure and go down that deep and not get crushed uh, from the pressure alone. So pretty amazing, amazing creatures just from those two little facts alone. Um, what they feed on are basically things that live in the bottoms, small sharks, sand sharks, um, skates, rays, uh, squid. Uh, they'll go through school fish, but squid are also deep water uh, creatures. So um, they're not a big fish eating 
creature, but they won't turn it down if they can catch one. Beep. Slides. New slide. So this is Ellie, and this is the house that she likes to come and stay in front of. Uh, like I said, she keeps coming back every year. Um, and um, then in 2000 and let's see, what was it? 2000, I can't even remember, 2015? Well, we'll find out. Next slide. She has her first baby. And there it is. I can't see what that is on my screen. Was that 2015? I think. Anyways, so she has her first baby boy, um, which has been named Ellison. And um, it was a big surprise to everybody, really exciting. And, and uh, the neighbors are loving it. Um, again, Ellie is finding this to be a safe place, not a lot of public. And so obviously if she's come back to give birth and have a baby, she must feel it's safe. Um, when I call the elephant seal story a pretty uh, amazing story and what a really a miracle, they were hunted almost to extinction uh, over a hundred years ago because their fat, their blubber is uh, turned out to be very rich in oil. And um, kind of the same time the whales were being hunted, these were being hunted and they're very easy to hunt. They don't really care too much for us or care about us. So it was easy for hunters to get on the beaches and kill them. And like I said, they were almost hunted to extinction to a point where um, there were only, you now the estimates are anywhere between four to nine animals left. And these were uh, down in Mexico, off the coast of Mexico on an island. Since that time, and since the hunting ended, the, they've been able to repopulate and yet, but the DNA, the gen, genetic code that is, was in these four to nine are this in all the animals we have now. And um, it's pretty amazing. We haven't seen that many up here, but the coast of California, next slide, um, is where they have really repopulated. The islands off of Cali the California coast, and um, the beaches all along central Northern California, some of them look like this. And yeah, those aren't logs. Those are all elephant seals. Um, so the population has come back extremely strong and healthy. And um, I mean, they've even blocked the road sometimes on Highway 1. There's a great little video of the California Highway Patrol trying to herd one very large elephant seal off the off the beach. Uh, I'm sorry, off the highway. Um, like I said, they can get to 16 feet. I think we have our next slide. I think we talk about the elephant seal size. Um, anyways, I will later. I may have missed that. Uh, anyways, once uh, Ellison was stopped because what uh, you know they they nurse off a of mom, and once that nursing process is over, they're on their own. Mom leaves and there's no connection anymore between mom and, and babies. So they're basically on their own. Whatever they feed off of has to keep them until they return to the water and start feeding themselves. So mom leaves, Ellison stays on the beach and molts, and then he's off and running. So the other thing was we don't know where these babies go off to, at least we didn't think we knew. We still don't really know, but they kind of been popping up here and there. So Ellison continues to grow, finishes its mold, and he heads out into the water. Next slide. Well, he's now six years old. And this is a picture of him last year. Um, you can see what is starting to happen to a male. And I'll talk about this later, but this large protrusion, this extension of his nose, uh, almost like the trunk of an elephant. Ah, elephant seal, huh? Mm, kind of where it gets its name. Um, it starts to develop and he's at being six, it hasn't grown nearly as, as large as it will. Um, these, these elephant seals are from a population called the Northern elephant seals. And um, they are actually the smaller 
of the elephant seals. And it's hard to believe because the southern elephant seals, which are below the equator, uh, along the coast of uh, you know, pretty much South America, um, actually can get much larger. But these guys can get up to 16 feet long, um, weigh over two tons, uh, 4,000 plus pounds or more, and live anywhere between uh, 13, 19 years or so. Uh, we measured Ellie from a distance <laughs> when she came back um, two years ago, and she's almost 13 feet long now. So she's, she's getting big. And uh, like I say, they get uh, pretty large. If we go to the next slide, I think we have a couple of pictures of different elephant seals and um, well, that's still Ellison. So he gets this, this elongated nose is called a proboscis. And um, that becomes the distinguishing thing between a female, they don't get that, and a male elephant seal. They actually use this proboscis to vocalize. And it's another characteristic of an elephant seal because it almost sounds like an elephant bellowing. Uh, so the big nose, and it doesn't get as long as an elephant's trunk, but uh, the big nose and its sound it makes, makes them give that, gives them the name elephant seal. Okay, next slide. Uh-oh, okay. These are a couple of other uh, elephant seals in the, on the California beach. And you can see the length of that proboscis, that nose. Uh, this one here is kind of folded over and down. This one is kind of flopping down on the ground. And this guy there gives you an idea. The scarring that you see, the, this, these marks on its neck. These elephant seals are, uh, they battle each other. They fight each other. Um, they, and they have got some pretty good sized teeth in their mouths, even though they're not a lot of teeth like a dog or anything like that. Uh, and they can do some pretty good damage to each other, um, but it's only the skin. You can see, I mean, these are all healed up scars uh, from these battles that they do, these males do with each other. Um, yeah, okay, next. And we'll pop through a few, few slides. This is Ellison up out of the water again on his favorite, near his favorite little beach. Can you imagine all of a sudden swimming along in the water? That thing pops up next to you with those big eyes. Um, they are, you'll notice in a lot of these slides, these elephant seals have very large eyes. Uh, when they dive as deep as they have to dive, there's no light down there. They can't, I mean, you know, so they need um, more. In our eyes, we have things called rods and cones. Cones help us distinguish color. Rods help us with the darks and the grays and the, and the blacks. They have almost no cones in their eyes at all because there's no color down there. There's no light. So, and their eyes are really big and they're very nearsighted. And we'll talk about their sight later. Um, from a distance, it's hard to, they, they have a hard time seeing things or what those things are. But when you're that deep, it doesn't matter. You can't see at a distance anyway. So. They're very good, uh, very close uh, and nearsighted. Anyways, this little beach that uh, Ellison has decided to come back to now year after year after year also has to be, is very populated with harbor seals. And so you can see the harbor seal, uh, the spots on the harbor seal and the size difference. It's significant, significant. Okay, next slide. And this is Ellison on his beach. Just a couple other shots that we've taken from drones and you can see all the little elephant seal, I mean, harbor seals and Ellison. He is one big boy and he's not even close to being full size yet. So he, uh, yeah, he's a big boy. All right, next. And this is with a harbor seal. And mm -hmm. again, quite a contrast in size. Almost that harbor seal almost has a look like what the heck are you? You're really big. <laughs> okay, next slide. Um, so we've had reports of Ellison being in different places, uh, but again, he's adopted this spot uh, on Whidbey Island and he comes back and hauls out. He's there right now, in fact. Um, he's hauled out on there and he's been coming back every year. Why he's picked that spot, we don't know. Maybe that's a characteristic of these elephant seals. Ellie has done that at her spot. 
Um, and we're gonna talk about another one later. Uh, Ellison has now done this at this spot. And um, so after his birth for three years, it was quiet. Nothing was going on. You know, Ellie kept coming back to her beach, doing her molt, disappearing. And then March of 2018, we have a, another happening. There she is. God, what a picture that is. So we have her first daughter, Ellie's first daughter being born. We call her Elsie May. And the process was the same. She nursed. Um, Mom uh, left. Elsie, was, Elsie May was left alone. She molted. Uh, they start out kind of a really dark black coat. And then it gets more brown as after their first molt. So when the babies are born, you can kind of see around here, she's starting to lose her fur and she's molting and she will molt before she goes into the water. And uh, then she disappears or so we thought. She didn't, next slide. She has become quite the talk of the town. Um, she, uh, for some reason decided that she liked people. She went to a wedding up on Orcas Island and uh, they liked her, she liked them. She thinks parties are fun. And she has repeatedly over the last few years gone back to the same place up in Anacortes. She has gone to birthday parties and Easter egg hunts and she just thinks people are great. Um, she likes their dogs, she likes the people. Problem is she is a wild animal. And I have dealt with elves and seals in the wild, uh, both the big boys and the, the females, and they can move extremely fast and they, um, they're big and uh, they're wild. So this is the problem we're having. A wild animal with people, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, like all marine mammals, she's protected by federal law by the Marine Mammal Protection Act. So one of our jobs with the Stranding Network is to keep people away and keep her away from people. And she's not making our job easy because, next slide, she likes to go where they go. Uh, she follows the dogs to their cars and you can see her size. Um, as I said before, they don't, they're don't. they not really scared of us. They're, they have no concern for us. Considering they were almost hunted to extinction, they still have no fear of humans. And that's what sometimes can be deceiving because people will walk up on these animals on the beach and they look like logs. And sometimes, you know, they might turn and they can bite. So uh, they're quick and they can move quickly. Uh, so it's really kind of a hard thing to keep them, keep the two apart. Um, but she has not made the job easier. Next slide, because as I said, she will, do what she's done and uh, get involved with people. So let's talk about molting. This is um, this is Elsie May as she's molting and it's called a catastrophic molt because it's unique to elephant seals. No other pinnipeds do this. They shed their entire layer of skin and fur uh, and a new one grows in, it's shiny and healthy, but you can imagine that happening to you. Um, we shed our skin cells every day, all the time. We're always shedding. Our hair is falling out, <laughs> unfortunately, too much for me. But we're always doing that, and we do it year, year round. They do it one time. It could be a four to six week process, and it can't feel good. Their eyes water, their nose is all snotty. It's really not very pretty. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's a characteristic to these animals. Um, and that's Elsie. And we'll show some more pictures. Next slide. That's her and her molt. And, and uh, you can see on the picture on the right, you can see the back of her is still molting off. Oh gosh, but she's so cute. I don't know what to say about her. Okay, next picture. And we'll go th through these kind of quick. These are just because she's so darn cute. And so we've gotten some great photographs of her in her yoga poses. I don't have any idea what that means when she does it. Um, she, we try to put cones around her with signs to kind of say, you know, stay away. Well, she doesn't like the color orange and uh, 
she crushes cones. She's a cone crusher. <laughs> She's cute. Okay. And just a few more pictures of her and her different antics and, and poses. Um, she does make other friends with uh, other animals. She likes harbor seals. She likes seaweed. Uh, she's just, yeah, she's, she's a hoot. I don't know what to say. So what do we do? Um, we're trying to keep them away and uh, from people. And because one, she crawls into the street and that can be a, a problem. So we're trying to do different methods to keep her to the beach. Uh, like I said, she's nearsighted. So when we have these tarps, we keep them at a distance and we shake them to make a lot of noise to kind of say, hey, we could be a danger, you should go away and you should go back on your beach. And so that's us trying to get a herder back onto the beach. Um, it has, like I said, it's, it's offered us some challenges trying to keep her safe, which is really what we're trying to do. Uh, if you ever come across an elephant seal with a tag of 1285, that's Elsie May. We try to tag on their hind flippers um, a number. And uh, so that, we can identify them where they go, when they go, and if we're and we get sightings of them. So that's her tag number. Okay, we'll go on. So here we are, 2019. Elsie, Ellie came back to the same location. She molted, disappeared, went away. Um, they, like I say, we don't know where they go. We've tried different uh, scientists have tried to put uh, monitors on them to get their locations to see where they go but they don't stick very long. They don't stay on them very long. But they are one of the largest migrating uh, mammals out there. Uh, mammals that have been tagged in California have been seen in Japan and then back again. Um, so they do, when they go away for nine months, they go away and they go away sometimes from pretty far distances. We just don't know where they go. Ellison returned to his place. He hauled out, does his thing, molts, goes away. Elsie May returned to her place and her social skills have developed even further. She likes motorhomes and the people in them. And uh, of course she, she's big. We figure she's gotta be now, I don't know, maybe 800 pounds now. Uh, so when she moves around, a lot of things she moves on moves with her. Um, and uh, she goes up on people's decks. She plays with their screen doors. Like I said, she's a problem sometimes to what to do with her. Uh, we put up signs, which she objects to. She doesn't like her picture, I guess. And so there she is again, crawling up on her beach and we're trying to keep her back. This year we were relatively successful because she came back and she pretty much stayed on her beaches up there in Anacortes. Okay. So that's Elsie May. But then March, 2020, same thing in March, she gives birth, Ellie gives birth again to another girl and whose name is Eloise. And uh, we thought it was gonna be a nice and normal birth. It was, everything was fine, but Eloise had a problem. Not a problem, she had a problem with the local coyotes. Next. This is, uh, one of the behaviors, this is Eloise with Ellie. Uh, and one of the things that elephant seals do, they flip sand. We see that on these beaches all the time. And a layer of sand on their back is one way that they can, can stay cool. Uh, and because they're on these beaches and they get pretty hot. Um, these seals, when they go on the beaches, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, we need to put water on them. They're too hot, da 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 da. And that's one thing we just, we need to let people know is that they're fine. They don't need to be put into the water. They're very capable of staying cool. And this is one of the methods they use to, to keep themselves cool. Next slide. So after, days after mom has left, uh, Eloise gets attacked. And I don't want to say attacked, but she was attacked by a coyote. And you can see that this is somewhat normal. 
on our hind flippers, well, you notice a chunk is missing. So they were managed to tear off a chunk of her flipper. It was a concern, but we really wasn't, weren't too sure at that point what happened. Uh, we knew something, maybe it was a local dog. We weren't sure until the next night. And now her other side of her flipper has been damaged and more of this side of the flipper was, was bitten off. And this was the picture I took of her while she was looking at me going, help me. <laughs> so we did, we did. We stepped in and, uh, and did some stuff to try to protect her. Next slide, <clears throat> excuse me. We got a vet, we put a fence around her. Um, we did some minor surgery because the damage that had been done to the flippers uh, needed to be repaired and uh, stitched up, antibiotics and things like that were done. And then we decided to, to move her uh, to a safer location. And uh, um, yeah, there she is in the boat. And uh, we took her to a different spot where we thought she was safe. And she, loves her, she loved her beach. And we were able to get out there uh, at different times and um, check on her uh, condition and uh, the flipper started to heal up. Go ahead, okay, we can go to the next slide. And you can see this is this is the good flipper, but stuff and this is the part that had been chewed off and you can see it's healing pretty well. Um, they will not grow back that part. They don't regenerate um, that part of the flipper. So now sh our biggest concern was can she swim? Can she go after prey? And uh, can she survive and get away, you know, from predators? Uh, the only real predator that elephant seals have are orcas and uh, great white sharks. Um, their size is such that any other predator isn't going to bother with them. Uh, we don't have any great whites up here. The only predators they have are, are transient orcas. So, she, we figured she would be okay. Um, next slide. So um, that's it pretty well healed up, just a couple little wounds that were still. And, but this, instead of uh, tagging her like we tagged Elsie Mae, because this area of her flippers will not grow back, this is her identification. So if we get calls, which we have, of an elephant seal that's missing part of its flipper, we know it's uh, Eloise. Slide. So this is just a couple of pictures of her on her beach, getting fat and happy. And she, she's, last we've seen of her, she seems very healthy and happy. Next slide. So here we are. What has 2021 brought us? Well, Ellison was back at his normal place on Whidbey. Elsie May went back to her place up north. She went to Harbor and then headed up to Anacortes and was doing her thing up there. Eloise was last sighted down in Holmes Harbor uh, in late January. And uh, she came back there and was molting there. And Ellie, she's back. And here she had given birth um, in 2015 to Ellison, three years later, Elsie May, two years later, Eloise. And we thought, well, maybe it was a two year process. Next year, guess what? She comes back and we have another baby, number four. And this is another boy. She came back to her same spot almost to the day and gave birth to this new one we call Elwood. <laughs> and uh, he was very vocal. Man, the two of them were yapping and talking and with each other for a few weeks. And uh, let's go to the next one. And uh, mom does the same process. Once the nursing is over, um, you can see the size, even as a the baby, the baby is about 200 pounds. So uh, I should also mention the 
fat content in mother's milk is one of the highest in marine mammals. So as these are these kids are nursing, they're putting on a lot of weight really fast. <clears throat> they may get, like I say, they can get up to maybe 100, they put maybe 50, 60, 70 pounds uh, on in a very short time. Okay, we can go to the next one. So mom will leave and um, saying goodbye, see you later. And there's Elwood. And again, he will stay on the beach by himself, molt, and then he will go. And um, he decided to cruise by and check on a visit on one of the neighbors. I, we were just so hoping he wasn't going to do what Elsie May has done or become that way. Um, and so he decided to leave all of a sudden and uh, was done with his molt, took off. And I think we thought that was the, he was going to go away until, next slide. I get a call that from the police department and the fire department that they had a seal stuck in a storm drain. Turns out, and you can see him right there in the corner, that Elwood had managed to climb into a storm drain outlet, get into the storm drain and get stuck. No way out, just deep enough where he had to keep swimming and swimming and swimming. And thank God somebody saw that because um, he may have drowned. And Next slide. But fire, police, rescue, uh, the stranding network all got called. Uh, you can see this cargo net here. We were able to get that underneath them uh, and lift them out. And then they closed the grates so that uh, he couldn't fall back in. And now what do we do? <laughs> well, we were gonna put him back in the water, but our veterinarian wanted to come out and tag him, which we did. So he's been tagged. And, um, but we, he, he was too tired to do anything. Next slide. So he made the newspaper and uh, that's everybody putting him into the back of my truck because we then um, took him back to his beach uh, and um, we can go on to the next one. And we put him back there. And for the next couple of days, he just hung out there and slept because he had to be exhausted. Um, so there he was. And uh, we thought, okay, he would go back in the water and go to wherever he had to go. So I think we're getting near the end here. Um, so anyways, as of today, Ellie had, by the way, she had come back and she did her molt and has gone. Uh, Elsie May left Anna Quarters in Oak Harbor and has gone. Um, where would they go again? I have no idea. We're assuming they will show up the same time next year in the same places. Uh, Ellison has actually been hanging out on his beach on Whidbey. Um, so he's been returning. Seems to be a characteristic. They seem to get a beach they like and they keep coming back to it. Um, but the things we, we have not seen Eloise uh, since last late January, and we've not seen Elwood uh, since late May. He was reported over at Port Ludlow. Uh, and again, we knew he was there because they saw his tag, his number. Um, as I said again, nobody knows where they go to feed. We know what they eat. Uh, and again, they come out of the water only to molt, breed, and give birth. So we hope that when March and April roll around next year, we'll get to see them again. And yeah, we don't know what Ellie will have in store for us, whether she's going to give and have us another baby or what. But this is pretty much uh, starting a, a small family here on our on Whidbey, and uh, we hope it grows. We have had um, a report of another elephant seal up there by the uh, Coopville Ferry. Um, Interesting because this one is also tagged, but the different tags we put on them denote where they were born and kind of give them a number. Um, this one has a green tag, which means it was born down in the beaches in California. And it's up here and it's now showing up on this beach four different times over this last six or eight months. Is it another animal from another, it is another animal from another place. Is it becoming part of 
the population up here in the Puget Sound, we're not sure. So anyways, that I think, if you go to our next slide, I think that's our last slide. And that's it. So that's our elephant seal. Awesome. Questions if you got any. Yeah, there was a couple raised hands. Eric had his hand up and uh, Julia had her hand up. So maybe Eric, do you want to go ahead? Ask your question. There you go. Uh, can you hear me? Oops. Sounds a little. Try again. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask. Uh, Eric, it might be easier if you typed your question because your connection's a little bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, then let's go to while he's doing that. But let's do this. Do what? Do seals do this? What? Uh, wait, can you hear me? Not can really. Do they pounce? Do they? Oh, like kind of like a dog pounces and, and jumps out at you? No. Now, once they, oh, you know, bounce. or bounce, they certainly don't bounce, I can tell you that. I'm going to guess it means, yeah. No, they don't bounce. They're too heavy. Once they hit the ground, they're, they're on it. Oh, I see what he's saying. He's, he's looking at smaller like seals. Yeah. That were... Yeah. How about Julia? Just, is that okay? Is that a, that's all we can give you, Eric. So we're going to move to Julia. Thank you. Julia, do you still have your question? Saw her hand up. Where'd she go? No. Okay. She's 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 she doesn't have a question. All right. Okay. And as I look through the chats, I think I answered most of the questions. Uh, um, There's a couple more hands up too. Okay. Um, Jesse, Dan, and Emmy. Can you hear me? Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a, why, we all wondered why you named them all with an E at the first letter, the first letter. That is just a great question. Um, I guess the neighbors, you know, starting with Ellie and E-L maybe standing for elephant, right? E-L, elephant. Um, uh, is probably how that started. And then after the next one came, Allison, that seemed to be a pattern that they were just keeping. Um, but sometimes it's, it's confusing. I say Elwood and I'm Eloise and Elsie May is like easier if it would be better if it was Pete or Joe, but no, that's mm -hmm. okay. We'll just stay with EL for right now. Okay. It looks like Charlie has his hand up, wants to ask a question. Um, first of all, it's a her. Oh, sorry, my apologies, Charlie. Um, I was wondering if I could show my picture. <laughs> and also, how much blubber do they have? Oh, that's great, Charlie. Nice. Fantastic. It's awesome. Charlie asked how much blubber they have. Oh, well, it's actually pretty thick. It could be up to an inch plus. And it's uh, considering the depths they go to, it really keeps them amazingly warm. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty thick fur when you, in a, a, a layer of blubber. Um, and that's the, also the part that protects those big males when they're fighting with each other, um, 
that that's a pretty thick layer they have on their chest and around their body. It can be actually on the big males, it can be thicker than an inch. Let's see, I see a question from Dan. Where are sea lions found around Whidbey? There really is not a specific haul out for any California sea lions we've seen. Um, most of the time we see them in the water uh, and they're rafting up with each other. Um, and the seals, I, I don't know, it's hard to say uh, if they've increased. I know our harbor seal population up here is extremely healthy. Um, and uh, none of them that I know of, except maybe, I'll have to guess on this, Stellars might be uh, somewhat protected, but all of them um, are protected uh, by the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Um, and I, I could say for sure that elephant seals um, have increased population because there's no longer any need for the product, the oil they had. And so there's, you know, no reason for them to be hunted. Um, let's see. I see one of the elephant seals made friends with a harbor seal. Well, that's Elsie May. She makes friends with anything. I mean, she was making friends with seaweed. So, you know, she likes to play. Um, she made friend with, with a cooler on, on a beach one day and destroyed the cooler, just had the best time with it. So you can imagine a 100 pound animal trying to crawl inside of a cooler. Yeah, anyways. Um, did many pinnipeds have interspecies friendships? Um, I would say no. I, I don't know of where they, you know, kind of like to hang out with each other. Uh, like I said, this is Ellison pulling out where there are a bunch of harbor seals. They're, I wouldn't say they're really buddies. Um, Elsie May is the only one I know that is showing any sort of real interaction um, with, an, with another. But I'm not that much of an expert on, on, on <laughs> interspecies friendships, but I would say normally no, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, and I think Lillian, Clara, and Willa have had their hand up for a while. Yeah. Right. They go so deep. Didn't quite hear that. How come they go so deep? Great question. Um, their food source, for one, uh, uh, lives on the bottom. Uh, and squid are also a deeper water animal. Uh, why or how they adapted to uh, that food source, I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, but their, their body metabolism uh, and, their, and their body is, has adapted to being at that depth and in that kind of uh, water that has virtually no light. So, and it could be because nothing else hunts what they hunt down at that depth. Hard to say why, but it is pretty remarkable they can do that for that long. Sebastian had a question in the chat, Gary, and it kind of talked about um, that going down deep about, do they use sonar when they're down that deep? No, no, they, their, their whiskers um, are a pretty amazing sense organ. Uh, they don't do what uh, cetaceans can do and send out, you know, uh, sonar waves that bounce back. Um, they're, you know, like I say, it's, it's pretty much by sense and feel and what they can see up really close um, that they're able to detect their, their food. Mm -hmm. Great question, though. Let's see. All right, we might be ready unless there's any more questions. Oh, I have a little activity. I see one from a Cindy Hansen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Cindy, what do you think the next EL name should be? I was hoping the kids would come up with some suggestions for us. There's some Electra. Electra, El Nino. El Nino. Those are some good ones. I'm going to yeah. write these down. Right. Yeah. Electra, El, El Nino. Roy. <laughs> Elroy. 
Oh, I love it. <laughs> Might be a girl though. I know, I know there's one um, that's not part of our family Elmo. <laughs> that has been uh, named Elvis. So Elvis is taken. Ah. Elmo, that's a good one. <laughs> Email. <laughs> Uh, uh, email. That's great. Oh. That's great. Good job, you guys. All right. I think we, because it's five o'clock now, that we should go into your activity, Jeannie. Okay. Um, I'm going to mute myself because my dogs are waiting for the mailman. So my Bible, pull up thank your worksheet. You, this was great. Oh, well, thank you so much, Gary. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Okay, did you did you all get to your little sheet, the little sea lion versus seal? Yeah, there we go. So we thought it would be fun to just think about what um, Gary talked to you about and see if you can name, find four differences between either a sea lion or a seal based on those physical characteristics and the little lines are going to like the head area, the, I don't want to give it away, the body area and the flippers and things like that. So um, if you want to take a few minutes to, if you're able to write those in and, and then we'll talk about them. Does that make sense to everybody? Like, good, can you do that? Okay, good, I see some thumbs up. So we'll give like, what, what do you think, Katie, like three minutes, four minutes? And then maybe later on your own, you might do some coloring on it later after maybe another time after class or tomorrow or sometime might be kind of fun and you can hang it up on your wall. Do the best you can with them. We're not going to grade you. It's just for fun, just to test your knowledge of uh, what you learned today, okay? And when you're finished, maybe put your little hand up or something so we kind of know where everybody's at. It might be helpful. This can make you guys be experts when you go on the beach. You're going to be there able to these guys and be able to tell people it's a seal or a sea lion. Exactly. Because lots of times when I've been on the beach, I hear people say things like, oh, look at that cute sea lion, when in fact it's a harbor seal. Right. So you would know the difference by a few key features. Okay, Julia's done. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> So there's a question in the chat. Are there any on the East Coast? And I'm assuming you mean either sea lions or seals, correct? So Gary, would you want to take that? Yeah, if let you... me unmute myself here. Okay, thank you. I don't believe there are. I believe that the only two populations are the Northern and Southerns, and that's a Pacific Ocean thing. I, I, you know, I will double check though. But I, yeah, I'm not sure either. Are. I don't believe there are. But then that's hard to say. They they travel so far, but I believe it's mostly Pacific Rim. I don't think they go around the Horn or through hmm. the Panama Canal. But I will find out. I'll find out right now. Fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You are welcome. Okay. Okay, some people are finished. Hands up. I'm 
give it maybe another couple minutes and then we'll just go with what we have, okay? And we'll have you, uh, if you know one of the answers, we'll raise your hand and we'll let you say it. We'll go, I'll tell you which one we're gonna work on first though. How's that sound? Good? <clears throat> Okay. okay, what do you think, Katie? You think we just, let's just fire in? Okay, all right, so let's, um, let's do it this way. Let's start with the, um, what I wanna do is, is compare them. So we'll start with the sea lion, well, with the sea lion, let's stop at that very first one, this top one, which points to the head. So what, what did you guys put for that? What's the difference between that and then the, the seal below it? So we're gonna look at these two. We're gonna look at this one down here and that one up there, the same position on the animal. What did you find? Colin, do you wanna say something? I know your hand's up. Do you know? Oh, I, I thought, um, I thought, yeah. The sea lion has external ear flaps. Uh huh. That's right. And the, what's different? The the flippers. The seal has a hole. Um, the seal has a hole for the ear. Perfect. Okay. Good. That's perfect. That's what we're looking for. That's a really good. That's really obvious. Um, differences. Great. Okay, so let's go on to um, the one, right, the second one over here with the body. Okay, what's different about the bodies? Who wants to answer that one? Who's, who's ready? Go ahead. Somebody go ahead. Unmute and go for it. I think that's probably going to be the easiest way. Anybody? Uh, sea lion. The, uh -huh. the sea lion doesn't have spots and the seal does. Perfect, very good. And, and the sea lions are generally kind of a solid brownish color of some, the varying shades up there, but they're, they're pretty um, consistent color. So I think that would be a, also, um, if you, uh, to, 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 to keep in mind that their coloring is pretty consistent. Very good, awesome. Okay, how about we take the difference between those front flippers Someone gonna be brave and take that one? I know you know. Anybody? They're long and big. Oh, okay, on which long. one? Right, okay, good. That's good. Okay, what, what about your seal? How would you, how would they be different on the seal? Like a harbor seal. If, if the sea lines are long and big, good for swimming. So what, what would be the difference? They're short and little. That's right, good job. Awesome, excellent. Okay, and then we're just gonna have one more area that we're gonna to focus on and those are the back flippers. How are those different between a sea lion and a seal? Anybody's ready to go, just go for it. The, the the sea the sea lion has um four four sets of um flippers and the seal has two. Uh, what do you think about it, Gary? I'm thinking yes, sort of, but that that's not exactly what I was looking for in that. So I would um. Think about it a little bit differently. Look at the position that the feet, that the rear flippers are and how they might function or not function. They walk on them and steer on them. There you go. That's the difference. Okay, good job. All right, excellent. Yeah, because those seals, see how they stick out straight? They don't, they, 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 they use them to propel with and the, uh, the sea lion can kind of flip them around and walk you know, walk a little bit. They call it walking. It's not really walking, but it's better than blubbering a lot. So, okay, good job. Excellent. I forgot. That's okay. Learning every day, right? That's the main thing. All right. And so yeah. we have 
one more. I know we're going a little bit over, but we had one more thing, and this is just going to be a kind of a a little slideshow we put together with real pictures of of sea lions versus seals. And just tell me by looking at which one do you what what it is when you're looking at it, you know the differences now. So what anybody what what would this be? You think? You see this on the beach? What are we looking at? Seal, sea lion, or seal? Seal. 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 Good. Yes. Okay. Next. How about this one? Nah. Sea lion. Sea lion. Okay. Sea, sea lion, lion because, because sea of what? It's, it's size lion. and it's, you see the little ears? You see the little ear flap? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See that? All right. Good job. How about this one? It's like Sea lion. How do you know sea that? Seal. Yes, it is. And how do you know that? What 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 told you it was? What made you realize it was a sea lion? Uh, Clippers. Yes. Good job. Okay. Excellent. Next. Oh, that little sleepy-eyed guy. Seal. Seal. Well, you can't see its flippers or anything. So how are you sure that it's a seal? Mark face. The, the what? Yeah. Someone said yeah. markings. Oh. The air hole. Yes. Good job. Good job. Can't fool you guys. You're too smart. All right. Next one. How about this guy or girl? E lion. E lion. E lion. Okay. Good. All right. I think we have um, another. Oh, that's a close up. How about that one? Sea lion. You see that little ear flap there? It's kind of small, huh? But it is a lion. Also, good job. Good job. Okay, do we? Yeah, one more. Seal. 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 Now, when you go to the beach, if you see these, you're going to know because you guys, you've got it dialed in. Excellent. Good job, you guys. Very good. Wow, they robbed that. Yeah, they did. So they were good. good job, class. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Thank you to Gary for the great talk. Yeah. And we will hopefully see you in October for our next youth Zoom, which is going to be focused on salmon and orcas. Yep, right. you too. Okay. Thanks for hosting this. Oh, you're okay. very welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. 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 So we see you again. Bye. Bye.